Hi, welcome to the Games Planner. I'm Jeff the Games Planner, and today I'm Games Planning the Isle of Cats. So, the Isle of Cats, it's a wonderful play game that came out in 2019. Uh, it has an expansion which takes up to six players. I am waiting for that expansion to come in. Yes, that's right, I have actually purchased this expansion and waiting for it. It's at this point in time in my gaming, it is rare for me to go, I think I want the expansion for that. Games that I find I really need the expansion for are games where the expansion is just part of the game. So, for example, City of the Big Shoulders, the expansion on that, it just adds some more companies. It should be part of the base game. With this one, the five, six player expansion, I think should just be part of the game. I really like the game. I think that it would work really well with more players. The way the game plays is relatively straightforward, but reading the rules, it doesn't feel as straightforward as it is. There is a pile of cards that you're getting seven of and you're taking two, pass them to the next player. Same as or similar ideas to the Seven Wonders way of getting your hand of cards. Once you've got your hand of cards at the end, so everything's been passed around, you're then deciding which of those cards you wish to keep. Now to keep those cards is going to cost you and the money thing in this game is fish. So it's going to cost you a certain number of fish to hang on to each card in your hand. So you don't have to keep cards, you can get rid of all of them if you wish. The colour of the surround on the card tells you when that card will be played. So some of the cards are an end game scoring and they just get played straight down, or within them they could be an end game scoring for everyone, in which case they get played straight face up, but you will choose what coloured cat, and I'll get that in a second. Some of the cards are going to give you baskets and you need the baskets in order to catch the cats and this is the actual game but in order to catch cats you need baskets and they'll also give you some footprints so whoever has the most footprints down is the person who is getting the furthest up the mountain and therefore going first. The order of play is actually really important. I suspect that the order of play is more important in a larger player count game than it is in the smaller player count game but it is still really important depending on which cats are out. There are cards that you can play at any time which enable you to get more fish or some other benefits. And then there are cards that can be played at the end which allow you to take the this special type of cat which is large and fills up some spots. And it's basically a wild card cat so you can claim it and say, okay, that's an orange cat and put an orange token on it to say it's orange for the rest of the game. And there's also treasure cards that get played then. So there's different times of when these cards get played. Having a memory of what each of those colours means, it will land by the end of the game. But in the first couple of rounds, it's kind of, oh, which, which colour are we playing now? I, you need someone who actually knows which colours are which and can call this is when to play this colour. I don't think there's a a thing in the box that actually tells you the order of which colours which and when they happen it might be an idea for the designers to actually put that in. Uh, while you don't need it after a few plays, the first couple of plays you really do to kind of remind yourself. Now the actual game is about picking up cats. So there's an island and there's a pile of cats on each side of that island. The cats get drawn out of the bag. There's two per player per side of the island. So if you're playing a two player game, you'll have four on each side of the island. If you're playing a four player game, there'll be eight on each side of the island. What you're doing the first player is going to spend the fish to pick up the one of the cats. So one side of the island costs five fish, the other side of the island costs three fish. It doesn't matter which side they're going to, there's a cost on them. It's using this whole polyomino shape of cats and you're putting them onto a ship. So you buy the cat or catch the cat, however many baskets you have out, it enables you to catch another cat or spend the fish to catch the other cats and you're putting them in. Once you put the first one in, every cat has to be touching a previously placed cat. There are some treasure tiles that can fill up little spaces if you happen to leave them. But what you, what you have is there's, there's a few things going on here. You're getting points for the number of the same coloured cat that is touching each other. So if you have three orange cats that are all touching each other, you're getting like eight points. If you can get seven cats touching each other, you can get 25 points out of that. And so having the same, they're called families of cats all touching each other, it's worthwhile getting larger and larger spots of them. But some of these end game points, say 
if you can have six, exactly six of this color, then you'll get so many points at the end of the game. And so you don't want the seventh one to cover that space. It's just other things to think about as you're going. The whole ship at the end, there's little rooms on the ship. And if you have one spot in any room that's not covered by a cat token, you're losing five points. And so filling up spaces on the ship, as many spaces on the ship are really worthwhile. But there's end game points, or sometimes there's an end game point where if you haven't got any of the spots in the middle area of your ship covered, it's worth a whole bunch of points. There's another card where if you've got every area around the edge of your ship covered, it's worth a whole bunch of points. And this is really where the game comes into its own because you're looking at these cards going, okay, I can do this. Those two cards I just spoke about, they go really well together because going around for the end and keeping the inside open, you're probably going to end up doing that if you're going for one of them, you'll end up doing both. So getting both lots of points is really worthwhile. And this might be a negative. I don't, I haven't quite worked out if there is negatives on this one, but the fact that depending on which cards you get as those end game points, because the cards coming in are relatively random, there's quite a large pile. I know in a two player game, you're definitely not going to get anywhere near halfway through that deck, but the cards coming in that give end game points aren't necessarily a good combination. You might get, oh, you'll get so many points if you get six of these cats but for a whole bunch of different cats. And it's actually not possible, as far as I've seen, and it may be, but you've got to work really hard, but I don't think it's possible to get multiples of that six of the cat, depending on when that card comes into your hand, will, in terms of the length of the game, will determine on whether it's worthwhile taking it. So taking one of those six, six cats of the same color cards early in the game is really worthwhile, but taking it late in the game not worthwhile at all but you don't have to take the card the whole thing is you're choosing which cards you're looking at so you're, you're drafting your hand but then you're paying for which cards in that hand you're going to hang on to and where you're going to use so being able to kind of glance around and see everyone else's board and go oh that card it's no good for me but that will help that next person i'm about to pass it to there aren't any other cards here that will help me i might just hang on to that even though i won't actually use it there's thoughts there I don't know if there's a viability of that thought. I assume there is a little bit on the larger player count game, but it comes into that question mark of when you're drafting, are you hate drafting? So taking cards that the next person would love to take just so they can't have it, or are you taking cards that are just going to help you? And really making that decision, I found personally, I found that every time that decision has come up, taking the card that will help you is always more beneficial than the hate drafting because hate drafting holds them down but doesn't help you win. Whereas taking cards that help you, help you win even though other players are doing similar things. Look, I think that's enough about Isle of Cats for the moment. Please go ahead and watch my games playing game explanation to get a feel for how the game plays and if you would like it or not. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be games planned, please shoot me an email to thegamesplanner at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplanner to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm games planning. And until next time, enjoy gaming.